the students in my today's lecture i will talk about three topics i'm going to explain you about the manometer basically manometer is a device which is used for measuring pressure i'm going to talk about a bernoulli principle and i'm going to explain you about boyle's law which is a pressure boyle law so three topics i'm going to cover in my today's lecture so first let's start with the manometer what is a manometer so it is an instrument which used for measuring the pressure of a fluid there are many other uh, instruments are present but this is also one of the instrument by which you can measure a fluid pressure so it is an instrument used for measuring a few pressure so let's talk how the manometer works manometer is a u shaped tube filled with a thick liquid dense liquid so in this manometer you can find a dense liquid so liquid is filled this dense liquid is a mercury i am using a mercury inside to explain you so this is the mercury i hope you all know what is the symbol of mercury the symbol of mercury is h this end is open from here this end is also open from here so these both the ends are open it means both the places you have a atmospheric pressure so this is your pat atmospheric pressure as the pressure at both the ends is same that's why you can't see a difference in this mercury level this part this part the left side one is known as a left limb this right side one is known as a right limb this part is known as a Atom. and here you have a atmospheric pressure so in this case if this is the end a this is the end b you can say the pressure at point a is equal to pressure at point b so here both the places pressure same i hope you all know how to calculate atmospheric pressure in the last lecture we talked about pressure is equal to rho g h Where rho is the density of a liquid, g is the gravity, h is the height. So from this, if you are using a barometer, by using barometer, you can get the value of atmospheric pressure, which is 10 to the power of 5 pascal. But today I am not, I am not going to cover a barometer. Today in my lecture, I will talk about the manometer. So there's a case. Let's say case number one. When gas pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure. So if gas pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure, then how we can measure a pressure of a gas? So there's one container filled with the gas. And we have a U-shaped manometer connected to this. This part is open to surrounding. It means open to atmosphere. So at this place we have our atmospheric pressure. Inside the gas molecules are present. So inside we have a gas pressure. And in this tube, mercury is filled. So here the mercury is filled. Now you can see one thing here. This part is going down. From here the mercury is going down, and from here the mercury rising up. So you can get some high difference edge. This edge will help you to 
calculate the gas pressure. So I am taking one point A here at this place I am taking one point B here and at this place I am taking a point C. So whatever is the pressure at point A that is equal to pressure at point B and pressure at point A is actually a gas pressure. It is the pressure of the gas which making this mercury to go down. So from here it is going down, from here mercury is rising up. So this is the gas pressure. So how much is pressure at point B? At point B there are two pressures. One is atmospheric pressure and plus one pressure due to the depth. It means at point B the pressure due to the depth and the atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure and plus pressure due to depth. And this P is actually a gas pressure. So the gas pressure is calculated as well. atmospheric pressure plus rho g. So with this formula, in this case, we can calculate a gas pressure. In second case, let's say when the gas pressure is less than atmospheric pressure, then what would be the condition? So case 2, when gas pressure is less than atmospheric pressure, again I am taking one container filled with the gas connected to a manometer like this. This part is open to surrounding, so we have a atmospheric pressure. Inside we have a gas molecule, that's why we have a gas pressure. And from here, the mercury is rising up, from here, mercury is going down. And you know very well why it's happening, actually, the gas pressure is less. So obviously the atmospheric pressure will dominate the mercury. So from here it will go down, from that side it will rise up. So from here the mercury is going down, from this end it is rising up. And this is the mercury. So from here you can see the high difference. This is the H. H. So I am taking the point A here. I am taking one point B here. I am taking one point C. Now in this case, in this case we have PA is equal to P, but here we have PB is equal to PC because A is somewhere here. So in this condition, the pressure at point B is equal to pressure at point C. And the pressure at point C is actually a atmospheric pressure. So this is the atmospheric pressure. But how much is the pressure at point B? Again, same thing, like, like this, pressure at point B was atmospheric pressure plus rho gh, but here, the pressure is coming through the gas and plus due to this height. So here, I have to write a gas pressure plus the pressure due to the height, which is rho gh. So from here, uh, I have to extend one more step. The PB is basically an atmospheric pressure. So I can write P atmosphere is equals to gas pressure plus rho g h. So in this case, the gas pressure will be, you have to take this to the left side, P atmospheric subtracted by rho g h. So like this you can calculate a gas pressure when uh, atmospheric pressure is greater than the gas pressure. So keep these two things in your mind that one, if the gas pressure is greater than atmospheric then for solving the numericals you have to deal with this formula 
where gas pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus OGH. If there's a condition atmospheric pressure is greater, then you have to use a formula. Gas pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure minus rho GH. If there's a both the ends are open to the same side or same gas pressure or they are open to the surrounding, in that case there will be no high difference because pressure at both the points are same. So here the P A is equal to P. I already told you what value of what value of P atmosphere you have to take. If you take a 10 to the power 5 pascal, that value you can use here. Now I am giving you a small example how uh, we can calculate a pressure of a liquid practically by using a manometer. In my next example, I am not going to take a gas, I am going to take a liquid. So I am going to measure a pressure of a liquid by using a manometer. So let's talk about that. Students, just see this diagram. In this picture, there is a fluid. This is the fluid or this is the liquid. I am interested in measuring a pressure of this particular liquid. So for this, I have a YouTube manometer with me. This YouTube manometer is filled with the water. And I have one liquid. So I have to measure the pressure of this particular liquid. So what I will do, I have one funnel which is connected to the one end of the manometer. And my other end is open to the surrounding. Right now, I am not sure actually which pressure is more. Is liquid pressure is more or atmospheric pressure is more? That I will figure out after looking into where this water is moving. So you see this picture and tell me, once I will put this point inside, then you see this picture and tell me which pressure is more. Is the liquid pressure is more or the atmospheric pressure is more? So when I am putting this funnel inside, which is coated with the rubber, initially, within a microsecond, both the levels are the same. But gradually, you can see the difference in the liquid levels. You can see the difference in levels. Can you figure out which pressure is more? Is the liquid pressure is more or the atmospheric pressure is more? Yes, in this case, the liquid pressure is more. That's why this water is going down and from here that water is rising up. After some time, you can see these both the levels are now balanced or they attend an equilibrium. So at that time, you measure this particular height, H, and then use a formula. As you know, in this case, the pressure of the gas or the liquid, in this case it's a liquid, is greater than the atmospheric pressure. That's why you will use a formula. The pressure of the liquid is equal to atmospheric pressure plus rho g h. So like this we can calculate a pressure of this particular liquid. So atmospheric pressure is 10 to the power 5. Density of the water is 1000 kg per meter cube. G, you can use 10, but standard value is 9.81 meter per second square. And height, you can see from this meter scale. So like this, you can calculate a pressure of this particular liquid. Right. Next, I am coming to my next topic. I am going to talk about a Bernoulli's principle. Actually, the next topic will is more in, it's more interesting, it will excite you because we are going to talk about how the lifting of aircraft is taking place. You all saw that how the aircraft lifts up, but what is the principle behind that? We'll talk about those things in Bernoulli's principle. Next, we are going to talk about Bernoulli's principle. So, exactly what is a Bernoulli's principle? Bernoulli's principle stated that the sum of 
potential energy, pressure energy, and kinetic energy is constant. So we explain with the help of a fluid dynamics that if you have a like this, if you have two different cross section areas, so at point one and at point two, the sum of the potential energy plus the kinetic energy plus the pressure energy is constant. So for example, if the liquid is going through this pipe, so whatever pressure plus kinetic plus potential energy you have at this end, same potential kinetic and pressure energy will be at the other end, second end. Now, so statement suggests that this is, a, this is one statement, or you can also say like this according to Bernoulli's principle, the increase in fuel speed occurs simultaneously with the decrease in pressure because some of these two would be constant. So, if one is increasing, other should decrease if you have to satisfy this law of conservation of energy. Okay. Now, how we can uh, see this Bernoulli's principle in case of aircraft, when the lifting of aircraft is taking place, how this Bernoulli's principle plays a role. So, I am taking one example. For example, aircraft wing. The wing of an aircraft intentionally is designed like this. The wind is going like this. So actually the motion of an aircraft is to the left. This is the motion. And opposite to the motion we have drag force. So this is the drag force. And the wind is going like this. From here it's going like this. Like this. You can see here the molecules are more close to like the, this lines are more close to each other. But actually the molecules spacing, the spacing between the molecules would be more here as compared to here. That is why, why it's like this that I will explain to you later on. First of all our uh, main theme is to make you understand what is a Bernoulli's principle and how the Bernoulli's principle is applicable in this particular scenario. So at this place, at the top, you have a high speed. And if you have a high speed, then at this place you have a low pressure. Next, at this region, we have a low speed. And if you have a low speed, then you have a high pressure. So I think this particular thing is justifying this particular statement that according to Bernoulli's principle, the increase in fluid speed, increase in fluid speed occurs simultaneously with the decrease in pressure and vice versa also. If there is a low speed, then there would be a high pressure. So in this case, at the bottom end of the aircraft, you have a high pressure. At the upper end, you have a low pressure. So the lift would be from higher pressure to the low pressure. So this is the lift. That's why the aircraft lifts up. Now, the two questions are coming in your mind that I simply wrote the statement that here I have a high speed and here I have a low pressure. But how? How? So in the next uh, picture, I'm going to explain you these things in terms of micro level. So this is the shape of 
a way like this. Like this. And the wind is going from this end like this and from here to it like this. First of all, I will, I will tell you one thing that whatever this is the point A and this is the point B. The air molecules which is leaving this place and air molecules which is leaving this place, they both are reaching at the same time at this place, at this particular end. But the molecules which are present here at the upper end, they are traveling a more distance. They are traveling a more distance as compared to the molecules which are here, which are here. Now, my the question comes in your mind that if they are taking the same time, but this one is traveling a more distance, how come? Because the initial energy with these both molecules are same. So how come this one is moving faster? This molecule is moving slower. Time is same, but this molecule is traveling more distance. So here, something is known as a quanta effect. So here, at the top, quanta effect is Quanta effect is taking place. What is a quanta effect? If uh, you put the fluid or put the water uh, through the tap on a water bottle, you can see the curve. You can see the curve of the flow of a fluid. So in that case, you are not giving energy to a fluid, so it will take a curve. But automatically due to the shape of that particular container, it's moving in curve. So here, due to the shape of this particular vein, these molecules are turning and they are moving faster as compared to these molecules. So this is happening due to the quantum effect. So you all know the velocity is equal to displacement by time. Now these molecules are traveling a more distance. So if these molecules are traveling more distance, it means you have a velocity high. That's why students are writing here. These molecules have a high speed. Okay, what about the pressure? Why the pressure is low? Then you can relate with P is equal to rho g h. Here molecules are more spaced, so you have less density. And if the density is low, obviously the pressure will also be here. No. So that's why I'm writing here at this point we have a high speed but low pressure. What about this part? Bottom part. At the bottom part, exactly opposite to this, the velocity is equals to distance by time. These molecules are traveling less distance. See the shape? Here the molecules are traveling more distance. So this distance is less at the bottom. Distance less, same time, it means this velocity is less. This is a less velocity at the bottom. And what about the pressure? The pressure is P equals to rho g h. Molecules are more closely packed, so the density would be high. And if density is high, then obviously the pressure will also be up high. So that's why at the bottom we have a high pressure. Now high pressure, low pressure, pressure difference, obviously the lift would be up. So like this the lift is taking place. This is not only a one phenomena which is taking place in the aircraft. There's a many thing for balancing the aircraft that I will explain you in my future lectures. Right now, that's it about the Bernoulli's principle. Hello students. Next, we will talk about the squares gases. In this, I am going to explain you about the relationship between pressure and volume, which is also known as a Boyle's law. So, according to Boyle's law, 
the pressure and volume both are inversely proportional to each other and this is only applicable when the temperature is constant. So for explaining this pressure volume relationship, I am taking one small example to make a more clear view in front of you that how the pressure and volume both are inversely proportional to each other. So for this, uh, I am using one container. This container is filled with the gas. In the second case, same, same container, but the volume is more. So this volume V2 is greater than V1. Now, when the volume is more, in that case, these molecules will take a more time to hit the wall of the container as compared to this. So what? If the molecules are taking more time to hit the container, so how the pressure is related to this? So for that, you have to see this expression that pressure is equal to force by L and force is the change in momentum which is mass multiplied by velocity by time, area is already there. It means the pressure and this time is inversely proportional to each other. It means if you have a more time, it's taking more time to hit the container, then it will be a less pressure. So in the first case, you have more pressure as compared to in the second case, in the case B. In this case B, you have a less pressure because the volume is more. It means larger the volume, lower the pressure. And reason? Because the molecules are taking more time to hit the container, that's why the less pressure is defined. Now, according to Boyle's law, at a constant temperature, when the temperature is constant, your pressure is inversely proportional to a volume. So you can write like this: P is proportional to one by V. Or you can write is equal to constant. For numericals, I am rewriting this relation as a P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Because when you are dealing with the numericals and when you read the question, they will give you initial pressure, they will give you initial volume, final pressure, final volume. So these are the P1 initial pressure, V1 initial volume, V2 final pressure, V2. If you plot a graph between pressure and volume, so your graph will look like this. In this case, the pressure volume graph will look like this. So, as the volume is increasing, your pressure, your pressure in the continuum. Basically, the pressure of the gas molecule is decreasing. Here, let us continue. If you are plotting a graph between pressure and one bar V, in this case, we get the linear graph. You will get the linear graph. Because P and one bar V have a direct relationship. So, see very carefully the x axis and the y-axis, what they are mentioning. If it's a volume, then your graph will go like this. If it's a 1 by V, then you have a straight line graph. Right, so that's it from the Boyle's law. So in today's lecture, we talked about a manometer, we talked about a Bernoulli's principle and the last topic was a Boyle's law. Right, thank you and have a good time.